uh, that's me again. So we have, uh, we have got voice that we can start a little bit earlier so that our break will last uh, its normal time. We're going with Marcel Klassen, Enterprise Sales Engineer from SysDig. Please give it up for Marcel. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Oh, lot of noise. Um, today, I would like to discuss with you a little bit why we do need runtime threat detection in your Kubernetes environment or container environment, and uh, how we can do that with Falco, the open source uh, software that we are using. So first, a little bit about myself. So as uh, William already said, Marcel Klaas, I'm a sales engineer at SysDig. Um, meanwhile, I also keep myself busy with other things like uh, some energy monitoring equipment and uh, containerizing that in my K2S cluster that I have at home at multiple, uh, multiple locations, because my wife has an office somewhere else, so I misuse that location to put the cluster, of course. Uh, some pumping equipment for my pool, because uh, I hate doing it all myself, so let's, why not automate it? And of course, some security monitoring, and as you see there, this morning I left my home, and with 80% certainty, it was me as a person leaving here. But that's not what I'm here for. So basically, let's take a look at the agenda. So why do we need runtime security? That's the first thing that we would like to discuss. Uh, after that, let's go for introducing Falco. So what is Falco? What can we do with that? Uh, I will tell you a little bit about the Falco rule engine. And then I will explain about how we can expand Falco with other uh, plugins or uh, sources and uh, output. Uh, information. So why runtime security? So let's take a look at this uh, departure hall of an airport, right? So we have a lot of people going in and a lot of information that needs to be processed by us. So what do we need? What do we see? Are we interested in what's happening there? Do we want to keep things safe here? And that's the main reason that we have security at an airport, right? We want to make sure everything is secure. But what do we do with all those signals? Because we have a lot of signals here. We have people scratching their head. Ah, I don't care. We have people smiling. Do we really care about smiling? No, we don't. Then other signals like, is this guy armed? No, that's a false positive, right? We don't want false positive of all our signals. We only want to make sure that signals are correct. So for this guy, for instance, that's an armed guy. So this is a threat for our system and we want to make sure that this one is detected. So at the departure hall or in, in the security center in the airport, that's all arranged for us. We lead people into the security lanes and they are tracked everyone one by one. But how are you gonna do that in your Kubernetes environment or your container environment? So why do we need runtime security? Of course, to detect malicious behavior. Um, and I know all of you probably are certain that you build your images with all the pipeline, uh, vulnerability scanning, everything is out of it, uh, no critical vulnerabilities left, everything what is fixed can be fixed, we know all about it, but then still, right? you are running in, in a deployment, and what happened in a deployment, if you spawn a container of your image, the image is running, right? so we can get some drift, is your application really doing what it should do, is there a uh, misconfigured application in there that is allowing uh, 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 an uh, adversary to get into your system using uh, uh, a malformed PHP script. And what about zero day exploits or unknown exploits, right? So you want to know what's happening inside your environment. Next to that, all the images that you run in your environment are not always yours. So you also are depending on third parties and you don't know what, what they built, what, they, what they've done. So you want to know what's running inside your environment. After that, if you've detected a uh, threat, you want to know what's going on, but you also want to be alerted upon that. So right away, preferably right away when it's happening, so not one hour later or a day later, sometimes you see that, or uh, at the report two days later that you see, oh, there was a threat, that's too late. You want to see it now. Now it's happening, now you want to see the alert. Next to that, after uh, the threat has been raised, you want to do some forensics, uh, tech audit activity, uh, get some knowledge about what happened to see if you can prevent it from a future use. And the last one, not, not the least uh, important, 
is you need to be compliant with a lot of security frameworks. If your information, if your environment is not correctly configured, you are not compliant. If you have certain files that can be written to, you are not compliant. So with Falco, you can detect what's happening on that. If we take a look at the runtime security, we all have that applications that are running and all the applications are spawning their details to the screen. So you all recognize the output of all the different applications that you have, but none of them are confirming to a single source of truth. So they only sp uh, send out the uh, information that they are programmed to do so. So if there is a malicious activity in that application that is not known as a malicious, malicious activity in that certain application, they don't recognize it. They just show the output as it is. Someone is getting an, uh, a PHP file, but you don't know what's wrong or what's right. So how are you going to get around with all those events from all the different sources? This might not be the right reason, right? It's probably a good start, but it won't help you. This is the time to introduce Falco. So Falco is a, a cloud native uh, computing foundation object. It's incubating actually. And you can consider that as your security camera for your containers and cloud. So basically Falco is taking a look at everything that's happening in your system on your container level, but also on cloud and other sources. First of all, where did Falco come from? Uh, from the people that are long around in business here, uh, maybe they know about Etherreal, right? So Etherreal, the predecessor of Wireshark, that was something around 2000 when I was still young. And uh, uh, at some point, somewhere around 2000, 2005, I think, or something, Wireshark was created, and it was basically due to uh, uh, a naming uh, discussion with the owner of Etherreal. Um, and one of the creators of Wireshark, or the co-developers of Wireshark, started a new company named Sysdig. And Sysdig created uh, the, uh, a deep container, as it's called, container forensics troubleshooting tool, basically based on Wireshark, but then specifically for containers. Uh, out of that, Falco was created. And Falco basically was created because uh, he had that static information about uh, uh, container information, about syscalls being done and all the kind of things, but he wanted to have information what was happening real time. So Falco is, a, as they call it right, uh, cloud native threat and anomaly detection tool. Uh, currently, uh, uh, Falco is now uh, incubation project uh, in the GitHub. Uh, we have over 7K GitHub stars. I need to check it because uh, every time it's changing, of course. It's not live counters, by the way. And over 50 million downloads. And we have a lot of contributors in that space because it's an open source community, right? But you see the names there. This is only a very few of them that are contributing to Falco to being a real-time threat detection engine for your cloud and Kubernetes environment. A little bit in repetition, but Falco is the open source for real-time detection of threats, anomaly detection, etc. So how does that function? This is a very high-level overview. Basically, uh, Falco or the creators of Falco think there is only one source of truth in your system, and that's the syscalls. So we can depend on all kinds of information, like logging information from NGX or whatever application that you're running, but they miss certain information. So Falco is using all the system calls, uh, uh, they are uh, processing that system calls and providing you alerting output. So what kind of uh, problems is uh, Falco solving for you? So uh, our host, our containers, something doing that they don't. Are the uh, processes being spawned? Uh, is something changing in your environment? Are config maps or something like that in your Kubernetes environment uh, being called? Are Kubernetes API calls being called that are not able to be called or shouldn't be called? Uh, are users uh, uh, legitimate or not spawning a shell inside a container? That can be done via the kube, uh, kube control uh, uh, commands, or it can also be done, for instance, uh, from a malicious PSP file, right, or uh, anything like that. So that's the kind of information that you can, on a high level, get out of Falco, and that's only based on the Kubernetes environment. In the later stage, I will tell you also about plugins, which will provide you the option to get additional sources into Falco. So if you talk about what this Falco is running, so basically this is an overview of what the architecture is of Falco. Um, 
Fogo will be installed on your system using uh, a kernel probe or an eBPF module if you, f of using eBPF if you don't like any kernel probes. Um, from that point on, it's taking all the events in your system, it's like host and metrics, data, prompt sets, everything, but specifically for us, important security events. It doesn't matter what runtime you're using, if you're using Docker, Container D, or Cryo, or anything like that, we will see all the information on that specific node. Uh, you can install Falco uh, using a single application as a, on a host, which uh, for a cluster is possibly also, probably also more easy to install it as a daemon set. And we provide options there for installing it as a daemon set, so your complete cluster is directly uh, protected uh, when installing it. So what do we need to think about when output is being generated? So the initial Falco representation the default Falco installation is basically only giving you information on an output basis like this, right? So via syslog, right? Uh, notice a shell was spawned in a container with an attached terminal. Warning, netcat runs in a container that allows remote code execution. So basically, this is the default set of Falco. I will, in a later stage, I will tell you also about plugins that will give you the possibility to get extended data uh, information and also correlation with other clusters together, because basically the negative part between quotes of Falco is that this standard installation of Falco is it is running on a single cluster. So if you have multiple clusters, you need to go to multiple instances and get multiple data sources to get collected data. So let's take a look. Let me see if that works, because uh, some issues with the screen. Let me do it like this for a moment. Okay, see if I still have connectivity. Oh, all good. So what I hear, I have just a simple uh, installation here, uh, a Unix terminal, I th hopefully it's readable. And what I have here is basically an installation where I installed Falco on Linux. Nothing specific, just Falco installation, pretty straightforward. And what I'm going to do now is that I'm going to start oh, a program, a small program that I uh, created to get some events spawned. So basically, you can see all kind of events here popping up. Let's see if I can move it a little bit more. And I'm gonna here open up a tail. Uh, tail. Let's do a color tail, it's always nice. And let's say that I want to write below a binary directory. You don't want that in your container, right? You don't want any uh, writing below binary directories or something like that. So let's do that. And I see that there is an event right away spawned from syslog, error file known binary directory renamed removed. I can also go, for instance, like uh, modify LD preload files, see if that's happening. And basically, there is a lot of information that I can directly get out of it. For instance, also, what's important case for containerization environments nowadays is protect against crypto miners. Let's take a look what crypto miners can do. And I can see directly here that critical possible miner running in there. So we may think that this is all set up by me and I'll program or something like that, but Falco comes out of the box with quite a number of rules. So if you install Falco, all these rules that you see, all these uh, events that are getting spawned are default. You do have the possibility to create your own rules additionally to that, but there's an extensive set already available. Let's go back to my presentation for a moment, see what we can get there. Share it again. A bit more detailed structure. So this is how Falco is functioning. The syscall events that we just saw is going uh, to be one of the Falco sources, as you see here, and then it's going into the rule engine. So the rule engine is basically determining what's happening in the system. Is this worth of being spawned? It's checking the syscalls, all the syscalls relevant, and that is uh, basically spawning an alert via gRPC file, standard out. We're using now syslog, uh, HTTP, but we will get to that in a minute. So how does a rule look like that? This is how a rule looks like. So we took a rule here from the top, a warning symboling created with a sensitive file. We see the command ln min sf etc shadow to slash tmp slash marshall. So I'm uh, copying uh, a symbolic link of the shadow file. So how does that uh, rule then look like? So 
A rule always has a few constructions, the rule name, description, the condition, this is basically the part where it's all about, the condition is where the syscalls are interacting with the Falco engine to get all the details. And then the output, and basically the output is just a resemblance of what do you want to see, in this case in your syslog file. We're adding a priority and we can add some tags, and tags can be important for your compliance, because maybe you want to be GDPR compliant, and that's one of the reasons that you need to have that, so you can add a GDPR tag to that. If you take a look at the condition here, you see that there's a create symbolink and uh, sensitive file names, and there we are using macros. So macro basically can be used to tell, uh, to ease up the, the, the use of uh, rules. And you can see that this macro creates symlink. That's a condition that event.type is in, and then you see the symlink and see symlink at as the syscalls that are being detected. Uh, event directory in, so it's an input file, so we need to have that information. We can also make use of lists, and basically lists are basically giving you the possibility to, for instance, target the sensitive file names in this case, giving you an overview like my sensitive file names are etc shadow, sudoers, pam.conf, and the pvquality.com files. So basically, if any of those files is being touched, as being a symbolic link is being created, you get an uh, alert being raised in your system. So this is basically how you set up the system. It's a very basic rule, you can extend it very much, but there's also a large community maintaining those rules, so you don't need to set it up yourself. Probably the rule that you want to set up yourself is already done by someone else. So copy it from the community, add it to the local Falco rules, and you're done. I have some popular rules here, like for instance best practices, update package manager, modify bin user, well, I, I, I'm not going through all of them because you'll read yourself, privileged container is a nice one, uh, privileged shell, uh, terminal shell, uh, so compliance parts, uh, like uh, we want to know if cube uh, control exec attaches being used, PCI NIST frameworks can be used, uh, some known vulnerabilities that we know about, uh, like the, the top one, cube control copy, right? That's, uh, or the container escape vulnerabilities, that's all being part of rule set of Falco by default already. From the cloud native stack, and that's basically we see that we have Elasticsearch, Redis, all that kind of rules are directly supported by Falco. What else can you do besides going into uh, syslog calls? We only had it over syscalls, but that's all reduced to the, to the local level, right? In some cases you don't even have access to syscalls, but then you need to have other precautions. But we also have the possibility to extend Falco with plugins to use other sources, like the bottom part seen here, Falco plugins. Initially, Sys uh, Falco was only uh, uh, using syscalls and had a few built-in plugins like the uh, Kubernetes audit logs was default plugin and the A AWS CloudTrail was also default plugin. But that was basically the only plugins that you could use in the Falco system. Since last year, we built a complete new system that just allows us to use plugins in generic. So the Kubernetes audit log and the CloudTrail, of course, were moved to the other sources. The Falco plugins are going into the rule engine, and of course different rules apply for an AWS CloudTrail or anything like that, but they are uh, going into the same rule engine. What do we uh, provide for rules now? This is just a simple example, so AWS CloudTrail, we have uh, Azure Log Analytics, a GCP Cloud Log, uh, Kubernetes Order Log, as I already said, Docker, Twitter, Okta, basically every streaming instance can be added as a plugin to Falco. You can build your own rules around it, and of course the syntax is a little bit different because for a streaming instance is different as from a syscall instance, but it's easy to write your own rules. Output file. So I already noticed that we do uh, remote procedure calls, output file, standard out, shell, HTTP, but it's all pretty straightforward. Uh, uh, the text that I've shown you, right, not very well readable, so that's a little bit uh, uh, difficult. So. As we take a look at output files, then we would like to take a look at Falco Sidekick, for instance here, Falco Sidekick. Falco Sidekick allows you to uh, add external uh, output uh, regulations. So if I go to the overview here, uh, it, it, it collects the Falco events, 
not only from the node we're running on, but from multiple nodes. So you can use the Falco sidekick as a collector for all the events that you get there, and you get all the output uh, where you can forward it to, for instance, a Slack. You can do it to Teams as a notification area. We can use also uh, Spiderbat for our, our node red for some SOAR capabilities, or you can do uh, CloudWatch lock, feed it back into CloudWatch. So basically, uh, I, I added a number of them in the bottom part, but the list was, is much longer. And uh, so basically, it's very easy in Falco Sidekick to configure sources. Okay, so let's take another look with that same Falco instance, the same stuff that we did just a minute ago, but then we are trying to get into Falco Sidekick. Let's see if I can get out again. Starting the containers, so basically this is the containers uh, required for Falco Sidekick. I'm doing some reconfiguration with uh, from. Uh, oh, it's still. And what I see is control. So just showing you what the difference is to enable. Falco Sidekick as an output mechanism. So I'm going to show you what the original Falco uh, file was, the configuration file, and what the new Falco configuration file is. And you see that basically I only set a JSON output to true. So basically, uh, instead of uh, bare text, I'm using JSON output. And I enabled uh, the URL to some URL to localhost 2002. That's where my uh, Sidekick instance is running. So if I now go to starting that same instance again, run. You see already at the bottom part, oh, my, uh, my uh, color tail core dumped, always nice of course. You see already now that what happened is that the output changed to JSON. I'm getting all the information here, and if I now spawn a thread, Attempt being used to modify directory, and let's see if I now also have my sidekick running. Uh, where is it? So this is the fault of sidekick console, and you see now that information is being spawned inside Falco sidekick. So basically, it's giving you a good understanding of what's happening. It's giving you an overview of what can be done and what should be done, and. Uh, you can filter and search for s the, all the information that is in your, uh, uh, what was the output of your uh, uh, console. So let's take a look at the dashboard. It's giving you also priorities. And if I now do, uh, let's say, let's try uh, kill known malicious process or something like that. <laughs> Events. File below, open for writing, paste bin kill. So apparently the, the event is directly spawned into Sidekick. And from here on, you have the possibility to also configure your sources like Slack. I think I also set up Slack. I got a notification here, as you can see here. And you see here that my notification, like the file below a known binary, is also spawned to Slack. So basically, this is showing you how easy it's set up to get into uh, uh, Falco sources to the rule engine output via Sidekick, for instance, to several sources where you can get directly your thread events inside the different platforms. <coughs> this is basically what I would like to show you. I would like to thank you for your attention. If there are any questions, then let me know. And for more information, falco.org is your source. Yeah, go hey, ahead. Uh, okay. Thanks. Um, can it just report threats or also prevent them? So, sorry, what was the question? Um, can it just report a threat or can it also prevent it, for example, prevent a sim link. Now, Falco is a runtime thread detection engine on its own, right? So we can use SOAR capabilities, as I mentioned. So you need additional 
tools to do the to the remediation killing containers or anything like that. Yeah. Basically, the uh, the sidekick of Falco. Uh, basically, what is it is doing? It is a sidecar which uh, produces a RSS feed, if I understand it correctly. Something like that, or not? So, no, I'm not sure if I understand your question right. But what Falco sidekick basically is doing that the Falco engine is rerouting all the event messages to the to the processor of sidekick, mm -hmm. and then sidekick uh, is basically the, the the receiver of the messages and responsible for spawning it to, for instance, Slack. And what I also did, and that was this, the tool that I shown you is Sidekick UI, mm -hmm. and that's basically the follow-up of Sidekick. So Sidekick is spawning to Slack and to Sidekick UI in the example that I've shown you. Yeah, so, so basically it's a feed, and then whoever is the consumer, they can consume that feed and then get Correct, it. Yeah. yeah, correct. Yeah. Uh, hi. I was wondering if you do not enable uh, eBPF, uh, what are the downsides if you just use it without that? Uh, so, so, so it's either eBPF or kernel probes. So you don't need both of them. One of them is sufficient. So uh, by default, the Falco installation is uh, using the kernel probes. If eBPF is available, it will use that one. But you have options to configure that. Okay. What types of Threats do you usually find, and what types of environments? Ah, yeah, okay, okay. That's, that's a good one. So basically, Falco is. So I'm working at Sysdig, right? So Sysdig is the enterprise platform around Falco. So we do see, and uh, the enterprise platform around Falco, we're using it as a runtime threat detection engine in Sysdig. And the main uh, threats that we see is a lot of uh, private shells being spawned inside containers. If we talk about the threats from the outside, inside is often a threat, maybe not a real threat, maybe false positive, that's going into Kube's uh, CTL, someone spawning a terminal shell in a container just to take a look if the environment is okay or something like that. But uh, the most threats that we see from outside is more on starting with a privileged shell from the outside, like for instance uh, when starting with Log4j or something, you set a, get a privileged shell and the follow-up actions because the privileged shell on its own is not a threat, but the follow-up actions like curl and starting a net connect, net cut or something like that, that's the real threat. So basically, I've shown you uh, single events, but uh, in most cases, it's a chain of commands, right? So not only one. Yeah. Uh, Marcel, we have one last question, is that yeah. okay? okay. Yes. So is there an option to forward, I saw that Falco is, can be deployed like a daemon set or something to collect the logs from each host. So is there an option to ship the logs to something like a syslog collector without the sidekick? Or do you need this as an intermediary to collect the logs and then forward it to like um, something like Splunk or Datadog or whatever? Or can yes. you just lose like a syslog exporter directly? Yeah, so, so by default it's syslog and enter the, the, the output that I that I've shown you, right? So yeah. uh, remote procedure calls, uh, HTTP, so that's by default in Falco. And for alternative options, you need to have the sidekick installed. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, Marcel. It was uh, definitely interesting by the number of questions and the number of questions that I didn't let go. Um, uh, ladies and gentlemen, we are going to have uh, a 12 minute break. We're going to restart at 10.45 uh, here. No, sorry, at 11.45. My God. I'm, I'm Italian, so I got my times wrong. <laughs> uh, one thing that I must ask you, there is a workshop at the moment running, is that correct? So please, when you go downstairs, go downstairs and go outside through the smoking area left, and there you will get in from the um, sponsor's area. Thank you very much. We'll see you again in uh, a little over 12 minutes.